spaghetti carbonara, yum. I mean, who does not love spaghetti carbonara? Oh, I could eat that stuff every day. No, 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 that does not mean I'm a noodle hit. I want to show you today a totally new version of spaghetti carbonara, something worse to be served in a Michelin star restaurant, like spaghetti carbonara as a fine dining dish. Spaghetti carbonara also is one of the most amazing histories, or shall I say, fairy tales, obscure origins and stories, and towards the end of the video, I will tell you some of them, and some versions are pretty amazing, as you will see, but now let's cook spaghetti carbonara, how I serve it. So I use some smoked pork belly, it could be bacon, you know, smoked bacon, but you need the fat. The fat is extremely important because for our sauce, and I'll tell you more about that later on. So first cut off a few thinner slices of that bacon because we're going to make some bacon crumbles because I want to add some extra texture to my carbonara. You know, I want to have several textures going on. So chop that bacon really finely and then we're going to fry that off. So put the pan on, add some butter, make sure the butter gets a slightly golden brown color because that is extra flavor. And then to that you add your smoked pork belly and you cook that golden brown or slightly golden brown. Then you add some bread crumbs, toast a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to bake that later on again. I add some time to that because I just love time. And then you set that aside, okay? And then you need to let that down, chill down to room temperature because you're going to do something else to it. And then chop some chive. Chive is another garnish I will add because I like that raw flavor. It has a slight hint of garlic, slight hint of onions, which is really nice later on. And then when the crumbles have chilled down, you get some pecorino, you get some parmesan or some grana padano and mix that through and set that aside. It could stand in your fridge. Next garnish we're going to do is some San Daniel ham or some prosciutto, whatever you have. It just needs to taste good. Onto a piece of paper more paper on the top of it and then a heavy tray on top of it and then into the oven at around 150 degrees or 280 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 30 to 40 minutes and while that happens we make our bacon sauce so I'm just gonna get more of that meat that smoked or kaiser flesh or belly bacon and just chop that up okay and then I get an onion as well I will chop that as well and it's a pretty amazing dish as you will see it's really good for pre-cooking as well so I chop my onion with a small paring knife because I think that just goes as well if you're not that good with your kitchen so, so if you chef's knife okay I should make another video on that I think pot butter Oh, I love butter. And then you add the onions and you cook them slightly golden brown, okay? Not too dark, just a hint of it. At the same time, we cook the pasta. It could be candela, it could be sita, it could be penne, it could be macaroni, whatever you have, as long as you can fill it, okay? And then once the onions take the color, add in some chicken stock, add the bacon, you do have a recipe below. Cream, all the flavors of the carbonara, and then we're gonna cook the cream down by approximately half, so you can make a really nice sort of bacon paste. Add some more thyme, and you could, of course, put parsley in it because that's more authentic. And then I add that into a blender, okay? I'm gonna blend it to a really fine paste. But before I do that, I wanna add some egg yolks because I need to keep all this carbonara ingredients in my pasta. Blend it all up to a really, really fine paste. Make sure you taste it, salt, pepper. Mmm, that's good. And next, so fill that mixture into a squeezy bottle, okay? If it's not too fine, you might have to use a piping bag, okay? So, the pasta is now cooked. When you take the pasta out, make sure you cook it fully through. Don't want to have al dente pasta because it needs to be perfectly to be ready to eat. And then do not rinse it, do not wash it. Just let it dry off. That's why you overcook it a little bit. And then it sticks really nicely together. So if I haven't rinsed my pasta and just take it out of the hot water, it will stick really hard, as you know, when you don't wash it. So then cut it into sort of pieces of a 
centimeter to centimeter and a half, get a ring which you buttered, you could even put a piece of baking paper in there if you want to, if you're not too sure, it will stick, or how long you cook it. Um, I'm just gonna warm it through, so I just do butter, and then I fill it all up. Oops, there's a little more here. And occasionally make sure that you taste one, because they need to be good. And then you just fill it up really, really tight, okay? And then you fill each of those little pasta pieces with the baking cream and just squeeze it in if it comes out on the other side that's absolutely perfect because that's going to make your dish actually even nicer to just fill it up squeeze it in great like that i could have pre-made it put it in the fridge and it could stand there probably for a day or two into the oven oops i forgot that bacon the prosciutto and take that out i'm going to show you that quickly so that's now really nice and crispy and that you could put in a container in the fridge and just again warm it up, bring the room temperature. So everything in here you can literally pre-make. So that's the great thing about the carbonara, you know, there's nothing, if you do that for dinner party in a restaurant, great, you could always sit like there. And then once it's hot, so I put it in the oven for around 8 to 10 minutes at around 150 degrees to warm it through. I put a crumble on top, I sprinkle the crumble all around the plate too, because I want to get a bit more crunch. So the secret of all secrets, egg, put the egg in the freezer. Let it fully freeze through. Once it's fully frozen, defrost it. And what will happen then is that the egg yolk sort of got a waxy texture and you can handle it like so. And you could even warm it up. So I could even put that into a steamer with a slightly hotish, warmish water. And the egg yolk will hold its shape regardless. Here we go, look at that. Oh, it looks so crunchy and crispy on the top now. So can you see why that is so much better than your traditional carbonara? And on goes that egg yolk, and you can see it perfectly holds its shape. Try that out, freeze the egg. As I've shown you, truffle, chive goes around to get a bit of fresh flavor, could be parsley. And then put your prosciutto waver onto it. I have a few chive tips and that is my carbonara. So what I did separately, I made a little sauce. I took the bacon skin and a bit of chicken stock, a bit of cream and boiled it all up. Nothing too special. There's already so much flavor in there. And then I put that sauce around because I still need my creamy sauce for my carbonara. And doesn't that look amazing? Oh, carbonara my way. I think that could be in a Michelin star restaurant on the menu, without a doubt. Now, as with so many Italian recipes, the origins of spaghetti carbonara, as well as its name, is really obscure. I mean, there are so many different versions in different parts of Italy that it could be literally a video in itself. Spaghetti carbonara is credited to the region of Lazio, but some say it's actually from Rome. I mean, you work it out. We are talking Italy here, by the way. I mean, so good luck with ever finding out the truth. Um, one story goes, that the dish was cooked for the meeting of the members of the secret Carbonari Society when they made up. You know, another one says that a chef from the Sardinian town of Carbonia cooked it in Rome and named it after his hometown. And there's that story that it was named after the Carboni, the coal workers in the Apennine Mountains, and that the black pepper sprinkled over the dish resembles the fragments of coal. Great. While another story tells that during and after the Second World War, it was named after the Roman black market, call it Mercato Carbonaro, or something like that, which had plenty of bacon and dried eggs coming from the trade with American soldiers because they had it in the Russians. So Cafe started to cook spaghetti carbonara as a breakfast based on American breakfast, which was bacon, eggs, and bread. So they just changed it over to noodles. And the final story has 
has it that an Italian chef credited the dish in 1942 for a famous dinner for the US Army as the Americans had fabulous bacon, very good cream, some cheese and powdered egg yolks. He did not mention about the quality of the cheese. Anyway, so I guess we know just as much as we knew before, but now we know some pretty good stories here too. So thank you so much for your time. I truly enjoyed cooking that. I mean, not to mention eating it. So check out my video on panna cotta to see another Italian classic and you have a great day.